Hello there, and welcome to the video. In this video, I'll be talking about everything I could dissect about Project TL, otherwise known as Throne and Liberty, and previously known as Lineage 3, from the trailer, developer blog post, and any other interviews or statements online. In the description, you'll find timestamps to all the sections of this video, so let's get right into it. The game is slated for a Q4 release 2022, as stated by the developers, which means the game can come out in October, though it's likely to be closer to November, if not December itself. The game will also release on Steam, the developers and CSoft want to focus on a global market, so the game will be coming out to all regions at once and will support 10 languages. The only languages we can confirm are English and Korean, but French and German are likely to be included. In regards to what kind of payment model Throne and Liberty will have, all we can assume based on what the developers spoke about during their blog posts is that the game will not be pay to win, and will likely focus on effort and commitment from the players. NCSoft wishes to focus on growing the global audience and thus are likely to do research into what payment model will work out best based on that audience. As of now we have no confirmation either way, but speculation wise I believe that the game will not be pay to win and will likely feature a cosmetic heavy in game store. The game seems to have a tutorial in which you earn your special power of teleportation which seems to be an integral part to the game story. It seems you acquire it from some sort of ritual magic absorption scenario as seen here. Tutorial seems to be the same for everyone, I'm sure if other races get different tutorials but it's quite unlikely. You fight a monster, learn to use weapons and get loot at the end of it from a chest where it cuts from a male character to a female character. There seems to be a tutorial town right outside the tutorial, like the beginner zone, once again we are uncertain, but we can assume as much. The races of Throne and Liberty so far seem to be humans, elves, goblins, and potentially gnomes, and potentially orcs. The footage we have of gnomes and orcs is relatively short, and is a split second within the trailer. So what we have on them is truth sprinkled with speculation. They could be something similar to orcs and gnomes, but a completely original race within the game's fantasy setting. Throne and Liberty seems to have graphics on par with Black Desert Online, as you can see within various moments of the trailer. We know that there are several races to pick from, so character creation should be somewhat varied. Whether there is customization options like tattoos and piercings is unknown as of yet, but due to it being an MMO, we can assume that there will be several such features within the game. Throne and Liberty has potentially upgradable weapons and collectibles. As I do not speak Korean or know how to read it, I am not certain. If someone in the comments does know, please let me know what this actually means. We don't know what the max level in the game is, but the highest level seen in the trailer is a character that is level 66, so we can assume that the highest level is 70, that there is no way to be certain and it could be as high as 100 if not more. The game has buffs and debuffs as all MMOs have. We can see that buffs are above the mana health bar and debuffs are below it. As of now, we don't know if there are any class choices, but we know that there are weapon choices. These are all the weapons we could confirm so far from the trailer itself. Sword and shield, with the shield types being kite, oval and round. Bow, some people have a quiver, some don't, we are uncertain if it's soft or tab target. Hand crossbow, tome and or codex. Daggers, staff, wands, swords, potentially rapiers and shimitars. Though they're unlikely uh, to be separate weapons and are likely just sword skins. Dual wielding is something that is in the game, though we aren't sure what the extent of it is. As of now from the trailer, all I can see so far is dual wielding hand crossbows and dual wielding weapons. Weapon swapping is also a feature of the game and seems to be used commonly to transition between different methods of combat. The game seems to make use of grappling and fast movements. Grappling and hooking cost stamina, as you can see here, when you propel yourself up a cliffside. You can also grapple mobs to yourself, which is likely a huge part of in-game combat. The game does not seem to have in-game mounts, rather it has animal transformations and forms used for movement. There's a land form, and we see various different animal forms, from wolf to lion to tiger. We have a flight form. The only flight form we see as of now is a raven or a hawk. I cannot tell from the trailer itself, as well as an aquatic form. The only form we can say for certain is a shark, which we see from the interview screenshots here. There is also a teleportation to way beacons, though we are uncertain how integral that is to the game. Herbalism is in the game, and whilst we can confirm this, we can't confirm other professions, but it's very unlikely that herbalism is the only profession within the game. 
as we learn more about professions in the game, I will update this section, but as of now, the only profession that's confirmed is herbalism. Pets and minions are everywhere in the trailer, but what benefit they may have or how they're acquired is still a mystery as of now, but at least there is a large assortment of these pets and or minions. There are massive open world fights, though I can't tell if these fights are instant or purely open world, so as of now it would go under speculation. There are different kinds of enemies and enemy types, aka wolf packs with an alpha, as you can see with the different colorations. There are also explorable landmarks that you can discover. What benefits they have is unknown. The game world also changes with weather, and players themselves can affect and alter the weather in game, which also affects PvP sieges, which results in lower areas flooding, as well as empowering certain classes such as lightning mages to do more damage. The game has massive PvP sieges. As of now, we can't tell what the wind conditions are, but it looks like there are two possibilities so far. Capture the flag, and capture the throne room, aka push all the way into the center of the city. There seem to be trebuchets on the walls and other form of siege and anti-siege like ballista and whatnot. Players seem to be able to transform into huge siege monsters, which can also jump onto the walls. The platform monster may also be a player transformation, but we do not know as of yet. We are unsure if there's any form of dueling or 2v2 or 3v3s within the game. All we have seen in the trailer so far is simply world PvP. In regards to raiding and dungeons, we are uncertain of what the game has, but the developers have said that they want to focus on all elements of the game. We know that there are huge raid bosses and monsters with unique mechanics such as hiding in the water when they do their ability, but we don't know how many raids they will be at launch or how many dungeons they will be at all. We can assume that there are dungeons based on the fact that there are raids, but the current knowledge we have on the game means I cannot confirm this. The game seems to have a unique and beautiful world, as they have created a whole new story to separate the game from the Lineage series. There are beautiful cutscenes, though we're uncertain if these kinds of cutscenes are only for the trailer or how in-game cinematics will be shown. As for the game story itself, I'll be doing a separate video on that down the line when we have more information, but it looks to be like a multi-continent spanning storyline with multiple games exploring the game's outlying story. Thank you very much for watching the video all the way through. If you enjoyed the content and would like to see more, please do like and subscribe as it helps out the channel a lot. I'll be focusing on Throne and Liberty as much as I can as I have faith in this project and want it to become the awesome MMO that I think it will be. Thank you all very much and have a fantastic day.